Here's a quick guide to the Old Lion's Court strike mission. CC in this encounter is more strategic. You don't want to just CC as soon as you see a break bar because there's a one shot mechanic you'll see here, which is indicated by the circle, which the dangerous zone is the orange on the outside. But if we broke the bar, it would be on the inside. So generally you don't want to break the bar to make it a little bit more predictable. And in a lot of cases, it doesn't really make a difference. So why waste your CC when you could just be stacking up conditions? Now the red watch knight has an in and out mechanic and it will spawn those circles you see on the ground, which will expand every second auto attack chain, which we'll see a lot more later on. But the green watch knight now spawns. It does its one shot. We don't need to CC it. We just wait and stack up conditions. Then it's going to do this pull attack and pull us in towards it. We want to keep moving away because you take more damage the closer you are to the green watch knight. But after it finishes the pull, you can generally stack on top of it. And it will have the same kind of auto chain, which will create an AoE there, but it's much smaller than the red watch knights. And then the blue watch knight, you'll see has a wind gust attack which is the opposite of the pull so it'll push you away and it will deal more damage the further you are from the target so you want to just use your movement skills to get in close where you'll be able to get support from your allies anyways so now there's orange circles you want to spread for those it's not too important but now we've got the cc phase all three of them spawn and do their one shot attack and there's no safe spaces so we have to break one of their bars to create the safe space so we always cc the green on that first one because that's just how it is every single time you just cc the green one on the first one that's just how it works how it's designed and now the red watch knight is going to spawn the player with the red icon over their head has been fixated they get that by being the closest one to the watch knight when it spawns and they can now kite the watch knight on the edge so that when it does its auto attack chain it'll spawn those puddles around the outside now the green comes back and is doing its one shot so we want to be careful the red will also do an in and out mechanic which you'll see in a second it creates a circle and you see those arrows pointing inwards if they're pointing inwards you want to be inside and if they're pointing outwards you want to be outside if you fail to do that then you'll create a shock wave that'll damage your party for each player that fails to do this so if everyone fails you're going to get take a lot of damage essentially so the yeah the puddle just spawned there because we were tanking it near the center not ideal later on when there's a lot less space because we'll be dealing with multiple watch nights at the same time now the green and the blue are out but the blue has a bubble around it which prevents it from taking damage so we want to be on the green watch night and doing damage to it but it is pulling us so we want to wait for that to end and then we can finish it off we want to get it to 40 percent essentially once they all get to 40 percent then we go to the next cc phase but until then it's going to just keep rotating through these mechanics and you can see the pull is happening again and we're gonna get it to 40 percent very soon and then the next watch knight is gonna spawn you can see the one shot mechanic is happening here but since we got it to 40 percent then it's gonna spawn the next one and this one's gonna be the blue watch knight so we just need to stay close to it when it does the wind gust everyone needs to stack together so they can be healed if you're off by yourself in this fight ever it's generally a bad idea because you never really need to split so we just stack on it and do damage you'll see a tether mechanic as well very soon yeah you can see it right there so when you get this tether on you you want to move away from the original location that it spawns that beam so that you can break the tether and the tether will then spawn at the location you break it at rather than at the origin so it's going to create the puddle on the outside rather than near the center 
and that's good because we want those puddles on the outside not in the center there's another tether that was broken very well played on the outside and now here's the cc phase number two we break the red watch night this time so it's first green and then second red and then once you break that bar you have some safe space over here behind the blue one and you just wait until the one shot mechanic happens and then we've got the third phase here the red and green are going to spawn so the people who want to kite those or tank those are going to get close to them and then the dps are going to wait to go in the red is going to be vulnerable first and it's doing the in and out mechanic so i have to get out and then we're going to go back in and try to do damage so the kiter which is moving the green around is trying to keep it away from us because the watch knights will first of all tether to each other and give themselves buffs but also because the green mechanic is that you don't want to be near it so it just works out that when the green is not the focus target it's just more convenient to move it away from us so now we need to get all the watch knights to 10 percent to get to the final cc phase the green has the pull so we want to be careful and the blue has just spawned so we have to be careful as well if they're going to do a mechanic here they're doing the orange circles and the red spawns here as well which we could choose to cc the red here so that we can move away from the green but the green isn't really doing the pull mechanic right now so it's not that dangerous we don't need to cc the red but i do get the blue tether here so i try to break the tether i move out it ports you back in when you break it but it does leave the puddle on the outside now the green is almost at 10 percent and it's doing the pull so we're just moving away and the tether yeah so we've we've killed the the other two and now the blue is left so we just got to get that to 10%. The red and the green are spawning now so this can be pretty dangerous. I've got the orange circle on me and it's creating the expanding puddles here because it did its auto attack. So we're kind of in a bad position right now. So I'm going to wait to probably yeah port around the side because it'll allow me to damage the blue watch night more easily and the blue watch night is not going to move it's always immobile so you have to watch out for these red circles if you're placing them near the center it's going to be really hard for you to damage the blue watch night so now we've got them all to 10 percent this is the third cc phase so we want to cc the blue one now and once we cc the blue one we will be able to take refuge in this semicircle by the red one. So first is green, then it's red, and then it's blue. Every other CC is optional in this encounter. So just think about it and coordinate with your team if you really want to CC, but otherwise tend to not use CC. So now the red watch knight is vulnerable. So we have to attack that, go out for the in and out mechanic. And there's only 10% left on each of these watch knights. So we want to just burst them down so that their mechanics will no longer occur. I've got the tether on me, so I break it. And now we've got to focus on the green watch knight because the red is dead. But the green is pulling us in, so I'm just on the, the blue one for now. And pretty much with the red dead there's not going to be as many mechanics so this is going to be pretty easy from this point on so this is yeah this is pretty much a, a kill at this point because there's not really much else and i've got the tether on me so i actually failed there to do it and you can see that it created the puddle at the original location but we killed the green and the red we just need to finish off the blue so we're going to do that easily and that's how you do the old lion's court if you like this content then like the video share it to others who are interested in getting into this type of content and i will see you all next time